Hey, it's Esco Barca here, and in today's video I'm going to tell you why FC Barcelona is the greatest football team in the world. When it comes to determining what the greatest team is, there are different criteria that you could use, and eventually everyone will have their own take on it. But even objectively, Barcelona is easily one of the biggest and greatest out of them, and probably the greatest. Make sure to stay tuned as I tell you exactly why. The first thing that people always look at when determining who's the greatest are the trophies. Barcelona have won 5 Champions Leagues, 3 Club World Cups, 5 European Super Cups, 26 La Liga trophies, 31 Copa del Rey trophies and 13 Spanish Super Cups. This means that Barcelona are easily one of the most successful teams in history. But as many of you probably know, they're not the most successful one. Real Madrid has got 14 Champions Leagues and 35 La Liga trophies. So they've won the two biggest competitions more than Barca. Doesn't that make them the greater team then? Well, trophies are only one of the many things that make a team great, and Los Blancos have been the most successful team, but the other criteria lean more in Barcelona's favor. First and foremost, Barcelona have had some of the best teams football has ever seen, and probably the single best too. In the 90s, there was Kraft's dream team, with players like Zubizarreta, Koeman, Guardiola, Laudrup, Sojchkov and Romario. And then you had the most revolutionary man in football as a manager. And they played in a way that was never really seen before, with three defenders at the back, including Kuman, who could make the play as a defender, which was far from normal back then. And generally, the team played in a very dynamic way, with players who interchanged positions and a lot of triangles all over the field that allowed them to keep hold of the ball. And when defending, they pressed high, which was also out of the football meta at the time, you could say. They won the Champions League in 1992 and also four La Liga trophies in a row, so it's fair to say that this is one of football's legendary teams. But apart from glory, it also popularized a new way of playing. And this wouldn't be the last time that happened. Cause in 28, Guardiola became Barcelona's first team coach. Back then, he had only managed Barca B, so it was a gamble to go with him. As most of you know, the coming four years ended up being the most successful Barcelona have ever known. Barcelona played the most beautiful football ever seen, and this was probably the greatest team to have ever played football. Though it's difficult to compare teams from different eras. Under Guardiola, Kraft's tactics were rejuvenated. In his 4-3-3, Guardiola emphasized triangles all over the pitch to keep hold of the ball. Messi even played as a false 9 for numerical superiority. He had a goalkeeper and defenders that were great with the ball on their feet and they pressed high. This team basically had world-class players in every position. It had the best midfield of all time with Messi on top of that. Do you realize how crazy that is? And with their way of playing, they won the Champions League twice and three La Liga trophies. But if it wasn't for not having luck on their side, they could have easily forbeated the Champions League. Again, Barcelona had revolutionized football, and a lot of the things we see in football today, like having goalkeepers who are good with the ball on their feet and pressing high, find their origin in Guardiola's Barca tactics. But those were only two of Barca's greatest teams, and the two that influenced world football the most. Barcelona have had numerous incredible teams throughout their history. Some people will tell you that the Blaugrana have only been really great since the 90s, but in the 50s they had a great team too, that won La Liga three times in that decade, with star players like the Hungarians Kubala, Kosis and Schieber and the Spanish Luis Suarez, who won the Ballon d'Or in 1960. In the 2000s, when Rijkaard managed the team, they won La Liga twice in a row and the Champions League too, with players like Ronaldinho, Eto, Puyol and Deco. And from 2014 to 2017, Luis Enrique managed the Barca team that probably had the best attacking three that football has ever seen, with Messi, Suarez and Neymar. They won two La Liga trophies and a Champions League trophy too. The point is, there is no club that has had better teams than Barcelona at their very best. Real Madrid have been a little more consistent throughout history, which is why they have more trophies. And their most successful side ever isn't what it seems, but I'll come back to that later in the video. And their team that won 4 Champions Leagues in 5 years were inferior to Barcelona in La Liga and in El Clasico most of the times. Also, when you look at other greats like Bayern Munich, AC Milan or Ajax, they've had astonishing teams at moments. But the greatest football insider there has ever been is probably Guardiola's Barca. Though it's difficult to compare teams from different eras and there will always be some subjectivity involved if you want to point out what the greatest team is. So, Barcelona have had some of the greatest teams of all time. But you can say the same about the players. No team has had as many legendary players as Barcelona. In the 50s you had Kubala and Luis Suarez. In the 70s there was Kraft. Maradona played for Barca in the 80s. In the 90s there were Koeman, Laudrup, Stoichkov, Romario, the Brazilian Ronaldo, this guy and Rivaldo. 
Then he went Ronaldinho, of course. And their greatest era, Puyo, Piquet, Dani Elvis, Busquets, Iniesta, Xavi, David Villa, Thierry Henry, Samuel Eto'o and Lionel Messi. And then there's still Luis Suarez and Neymar. And now we've got Robert Lewandowski. Barcelona have won most Ballon d'Ors in history, which is no surprise if you've just heard all those names. And the crazy thing is that most of them were definitely good enough to win two or three Ballon d'Ors, but never even won one. Iniesta and Xavi, for example. But the same goes for somebody like Laudrup. No other team can rival this crazy list. Only, you guessed it, Real Madrid. They've definitely got a good amount of legendary players too. Like Di Stefano, Puskas, Gento, Hugo Sanchez, Raul, these two, Roberto Carlos, Zidane, Beckham, Cannavaro, Ronaldo, Ramos, Modric and Benzema. But there is a difference. Graf was revolutionary with his philosophy of the game in the 70s, as a player. Ronaldinho was, is and will be the most entertaining player the game has ever seen. His style of playing has changed the way people think about skills and dribbling. Xavi and Iniesta were short midfielders who were deemed not to make it at the highest level against physical midfielders. Together, they dominated every midfield they faced for years though. They did the unexpected. The game changed because of them. They didn't have to adapt to the game. And without Messi, the false 9 position might have never existed. If you've now paid attention, you've seen something that's unique about Barcelona. No team has revolutionized the game more than the Blaugrana. You could say that Ajax did so collectively a few times and AC Milan too, which is definitely true. But at Barcelona, even individual players changed the game for good and for all. Every time Barcelona has been the best team in the world, it was with a new way of playing and that determined how football was going to be for the coming decades. In the 90s, their style was new, or at least new at the time, and other teams were going to play the same way to have success. The way AC Milan played in the 90s was based upon Barca's way of playing, though the Rossoneri were better defensively. They wouldn't have been where they were without Barcelona though. In Guardiola's era, the way Barcelona played shaped the modern way of playing football that we know today. And Man City for example, who've now been England's most successful team for a while now, wouldn't be where they are now without Barcelona and Guardiola. And when it comes to players, Barcelona have also been the most revolutionary. After Ronaldinho, the game saw a lot more of attackers with flair than before. Xavi and Iniesta changed the stereotypes around midfielders. Busquets changed the way people think about defensive midfielders. Messi changed the way teams defend individual players and free kicks. So the point is, there is no team in the world that has influenced the footballing landscape more than Barcelona. Real Madrid might have more trophies, but they've never been this revolutionary. Without Barcelona, who knows how football would have looked today. Probably less beautiful than it is now. That's one of the reasons Barcelona is the greatest club in the world. But that's not even all. For a lot of clubs, the way they play is determined by the manager at that moment and will change from time to time. And in a lot of games, they will adapt their way of playing to the opponent that they're facing. For smaller teams, this is only logical, because for them it's often the only way to get results. But a lot of big teams also don't just stick to one philosophy, and will do whatever will get them the best results. There are only a couple of teams that really just have one philosophy and will always stick to that. And those are Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. They have one authentic philosophy. Nah, of course not. Even they don't really have one philosophy and have changed their way of playing throughout the years. Only Barcelona and Ajax maybe too have had one authentic philosophy for decades now when it comes to the way they play. Barcelona is all about winning, but the way they do is at least as important. To pass the opponent to death with a very dynamic football and then make that one extra pass that's lethal, to put high pressure, to play with the ball out from the back, that's the way Barcelona play. Even in difficult times, this will be one of their priorities, they never neglect their philosophy. And that's why Barca fans love Barca so much. They love watching them play for 90 minutes, as much as watching them win. And when people will remember Barca in the future, it will be because of the way they played. They won trophies too, but this is something that Barca almost values above trophies. Because believe me when I say they could have had 4 or 5 more Champions League trophies if they were all about winning. They have just never given up their philosophy just for the sake of trophies. And if we now think back about Kraft's Barca dream team, it's mostly because of the revolutionary way of playing and players like Laudrup and Romario, not because of the fact they forbeated La Liga. Rinus Michels, Barca and Ajax coach in the 60s and 70s, was the real father of this philosophy. And under him played Johan Kraft, who passed on this way of thinking about football himself as a coach. After him though, there was Guardiola, who as a player was already a great tactician and went on to become one of football's best ever managers who has rejuvenated Kraft's ideas with Barca but also with Bayern Munich and Man City. And after Guardiola, there is Xavi, 
who was a tactical mastermind as a midfielder and now is showing to be a great manager as well. At the moment he hasn't won anything with Barca yet, but remember that's not what it's all about. He's implemented Kraft's ideas in the modern game again and Barcelona have improved a lot under him. And who knows how great and revolutionary his own Barca team will become. Um, after Xavi, you can be sure there will be someone else to take over that role and start a new era in football. As you see, Barcelona's a little bit of a cycle. A coach starts a new era at Barca, their way of playing determines how modern football will look, other teams will get better at it than Barcelona, and there is again a new coach to start a new era. If that doesn't make you the greatest team in the world, I don't know what does. This is bigger than just some Champions League trophies in your trophy cabinets. Lastly, Barcelona has a strong identity and a very own way of managing the club. When it comes to their identity, Barcelona stands for Catalan nationalism. It's basically the symbol of Catalonia. Especially during the first 70 years of last century, this was important. Under the Spanish dictatorship, FC Barcelona became an institute in which Catalans could unite with each other and preserve their identity. In a world where Spain tried to exterminate everything that was Catalan. People weren't allowed to speak Catalan anymore, for example. And even on the pitch, Barcelona's strong Catalan identity had its consequences. And Real Madrid, meanwhile, were the symbol of Spanish nationalism. So, the dictator and his party and institutes supported Real Madrid. Not just as innocent fans. They had a big influence on the Spanish footballing federation and had a lot of contacts within Real Madrid. Even Alfredo Di Stefano, possibly their greatest legend, was going to become a Blaugrana, before Real Madrid and the Spanish Footballing Federation boycotted the signing and he went on to play for Real Madrid. And this is what I meant when I said Real Madrid's most successful side ever isn't what it seems. Who knows where Los Blancos would have been without Franco, and where Barcelona would have been without him. The footballing landscape would have looked very different indeed, but despite all of it, Barcelona have always stayed close to their Catalan identity, even up to this day. And it's fair to say that it makes them even more great, whether you like it or not. And apart from that, there's Barcelona's way of managing the club. Unlike most big clubs nowadays, Barcelona is in hand of its own socies, the members of the club. So basically, the fans own the club. And of course, there's a president on top who makes most decisions. But he gets democratically elected by the socies. So in 2022, in a time where rich businessmen own most of the clubs, this is something Barcelona can really be proud of. And last but not least, there's La Masia, the greatest youth academy in the world, together with Ajax's academy maybe. Just get out of here if you think Chelsea, Man United or Real Madrid are on the same level. La Masia has often been a big provider for Barcelona's first team, and it's not like the big players have always had to come from somewhere else. Players like Guardiola, Puyol, Valdez, Xavi, Iniesta, Piqué, Busquets and Pedro all came up through La Masia. And I've probably still forgotten someone. That's how much wealth there is. Even today there are a lot of young players who are brought up in La Masia who will be important for Barcelona in the future. Like Eric Garcia, Gavi, Ansu Fati and so on. Barcelona's academy is just another reason why they are the greatest club in the world. So if you look at the total package of FC Barcelona, you've got one of the most successful teams in history. They've probably had the best team we've ever seen that played the most beautiful football we've ever seen. A team that has had the greatest and most influential players of all time. A team that has shaped the modern footballing landscape more than any other team. A team that has always stick to their footballing philosophy, in both the good and bad times. A team with a strong identity, with an authentic way of managing the club. There is no other team in the world with such a combination of success, values, identity and influence. And that is why FC Barcelona is the greatest club in the world. That was it for today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and feel free to share your own opinion in the comments down below. I also want to thank everyone for the support, it really means a lot. So, Forza Barca and have a good day.